Every year, half a million Hindu pilgrims tramp up a rugged track to the tiny town of Kedarnath, India, 12,000 feet above sea level and 10 miles from the nearest road. There, below some of the Himalaya's highest peaks, they arrive at a thousand-year-old stone temple. It's one of the holiest shrines for Hindu followers of Lord Shiva, the god of destruction. The travelers throng Kedarnath's tent camps and the temple's grounds. They seek absolution and wisdom and special favors. They anoint themselves and make offerings. In June 2013, catastrophe struck. Several days of intense rain had drenched the region, swelling the Mandakini River, a tributary of the Ganges that erupts from Chorabari Glacier just above the town. Survivors said they'd never seen such a downpour. Then they heard a thunderous clap. Three-story high waves cascaded into town. Scientists later calculated that for a short time, the lazy Mandakini River flowed with half the volume of Niagara Falls. It churned up thousands of tons of silt and huge boulders, creating a viscous torrent as fluid as water and as dense as rock. The deluge wrecked half of Kedarnath's buildings. It surged downhill, smashing bridges, washing out roads, and crushing homes far downstream. It killed several thousand people. Remarkably, a humongous boulder landed just shy of the temple, parting the waters and saving the building. Several months later, long before the damage had been repaired, a young Indian geographer walked 25 miles to the disaster site. He was one of the first scientists to investigate the calamity. He took in what had happened from an overlook perched high above the town. I was stunned by the, by the, the, the scale and the uh, enormity of the whole thing. From his overlook, he peered into a basin above the town, just behind that gray band of gravel in the lower left. It had once been filled with runoff from Chorabari Glacier. And that lake drained catastrophically uh, during the disaster. He and other scientists have since pieced together the sequence of events that destroyed the town. Very intense rain. And that is supposed to have led to a mass movement into the lake and then an overflow. And that overflow cut through the lake's weak natural dike, unleashing the huge flood. But why now? The lake's banks had remained intact for centuries. Scientists have recently confirmed suspicions that global warming may have played a role. Global warming appears to be causing heavier downpours in northern India. It's also shrinking glaciers, which absorb rain, buffering floodwaters. One new study on Kedarnath says the flood may be a prelude to more disasters in the future.